Hi, my name is Nicholas Ralph, and I play James Herriot in All Creatures Great and Small, and I narrate James Herriot's books as well, the All Creatures Great and Small uh, series of books. Um, to be involved in something so heavily, first of all, I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to, to play this wonderful, wonderful character um, through, through the TV series, and then also get even more in depth with his works by then narrating the books and playing a hundred different characters, <laughs> lots of Yorkshire farmers, so that was a challenge, um, but then playing wonderful characters um, all the way through um, has just been, has been a joy and, and as far as an actor is concerned it's so much fun, like making these characters is so much fun um, and I'm just so happy to be, to be part of that in, in, in such a kind of all-encompassing way, it's been, it's been a joy. So when voicing the characters in these books I have some wonderful influences um, and c can get some brilliant inspiration from the show and the actors there because not only do we have a wonderful principal cast that I can look to but there's also some wonderful guest actors that come in as well. Um, notably Mr Dinsdale in the books, uh, we have a, a wonderful actor Mark Noble so he, he's definitely inspired Mr Dinsdale for me um, and also Matthew Lewis's Lord Halton um, which is one of the stories that came, in, came up in the books there. Now, Matthew Lewis, I think, is slightly younger than the Lord Hull in, in the books. So basically, I just took what Matthew Lewis was doing and just kind of exaggerated it a little bit and made him slightly older. So Matthew Lewis kind of, all right, James, old boy, uh, how, are you, how are you doing anyway? We've got a cow here that needs looking at. And uh, so, so just to uh, make more of the the kind of stumbling, fumbling nature of, of Lord Holton, which is in the books, he's kind of written that way as well, and making him slightly older. Oh, 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 oh boy, how are, you, how are you doing anyway? You see, I, I, I have a problem with a cow. Do you fancy taking a look at him? So, <laughs> so he's just kind of exaggerated a little bit. And as a brilliant story is it's him, and he, so he asks James to come around and see this cow, and it's got a prolapsed uterus, so, and James is like, oh, it's a it's really hard job. It's one of the hardest, but Lord Halton's very fond of this cow. So James wants to do, you know, to do him, to get, give it every shot that he can. So he's there wrestling away and wrestling away. And Lord Halton, also in his kind of bumbling nature, uh, <laughs> he's quite anxious as well. And he's always got a pipe, matches and tobacco um, that he smokes, um, especially when he's stressed. So, so James is, is struggling away, bare-chested, pushing, the, trying to get this prolapse back in, into the cow and then occasionally he'll just get a light raining down of matches as, as Lord Hilton fumbles the matches on, so James gets the <laughs> matches onto him and he kind of dusts them off and then it, there'll be a light drizzle of tobacco that will come down onto the prolapse uterus, James, <laughs> so then he has to wash through all that and he's also got an instrument that he's trying to use to help him that, that Lord Hilton uh, kindly will, will pass to him so he's, he's struggling away and then he needs the tool and, and on occasion he'll say yep the tool and then he'll be given his pipe instead and he's oh uh, no the, the tool lord oh sorry so then he gives them he gives them the tool so so yeah so occasional occasional raining of matches a dusting of tobacco and then just being past this pipe uh, so it just all adds into you know in, into the character and it gives you so many ideas when when thinking about the character how to create this character so we've got the leaping off point with Matthew Lewis which was brilliant and then just making them older, slightly exaggerated, and then from the text as well, and then you put that two together, you know, it's 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 wonderful and it's a lot a lot of fun to to play with as well. Taking on such a beloved character has been an absolute treat um, because he is so beloved uh, as a man. For me as an actor, what I love is that these characters are so three dimensional, and because they're based on real people, and these relationships are so strong and intricate. Um, that I get to play James in a multitude of different scenarios. So you get to see so many different facets of this character. So for me as an actor, that's so exciting um, because he's not two-dimensional in any way. You see him, you know, in a heavily, uh, in a moment that's he heavy drama. Then you might see him in, in a more touching, poignant scene where it's quite emotional. And then something can be really funny and, you know, you get to stretch those muscles, those kind of more comedic muscles. So you get to see James in so many different, um, and pushed and pulled in, in so many different ways that for an actor it's so exciting because you just never know what it's going to be next. Um, and then that along with the challenges of working with the animals and the challenges of driving the period cars, both of which I absolutely love. I 
for, I love a challenge. So I'm like to the writers, just and throw it in there. Give me, give me anything. So, you know, if I'm lying Superman at the back end of a horse uh, or being kicked in the face by a horse or working with, working with cows, uh, tends to be at the wrong end as well uh, of these wonderful animals. Um, but I love, I love these, these kind of challenges as well. So, uh, so yeah, all that kind of mixed together in the backdrop of the wonderful Yorkshire Dales. You know, we get to go up there and, and spend five months when we film the series. It's, it's, uh, it's really wonderful. I'm very grateful for being able to do it. So some of the scenes from the books I would love to see in the series. Uh, one that springs to mind, two that spring to mind uh, that are linked is when James goes AWOL from the RAF. He, he, he subsequently is called up, he goes to the RAF in these books. And he goes AWOL the first time he just needs to see Helen. Helen's pregnant at this point. Um, he just he says he just needs to see Helen. So he manages to sneak out from the RAF and get back for one evening with Helen. And he walks in and Helen's just stood there kind of starstruck looking at him. And she's quite big at this point with uh, the baby belly. Um, they have a wonderful evening together. And then he, he hops back to the RAF. And the second time he manages to wangle his way out. And again, the writing is, is so good. It's so much fun, the, the kind of the great escape of it all. So he sees these recruits going by and they're led by a Scottish sergeant so he has to he, he's in the middle of nowhere so he has to jump in and pretend to walk about and then march along and slowly the sergeant comes down alongside him and kind of eyeballs him <laughs> because he's like who's this guy <laughs> on the end of my on the end of my uh, you know the end of my troops uh, and they end up getting having a chat and he's talking about going AWOL and this guy it's like losing, losing his mind quietly about it, but it turns out he's Scottish, he's from Glasgow, like James. So James manages to find out that he's a, he takes a 50-50 gamble on whether he's a Rangers or Celtic fan, he mentions Rangers first, and the guy perks up a little bit and he talks to him, then all about Rangers, the, the players there and how fantastic a team they are, and then he manages to wangle the sergeant, right, on, get out of here, and he, he manages to get out. Um, so that, that great escape is very, very funny, uh, the writing and that, and then he gets back to see the, um, or for the the birth of his first child um, turns out to be wee Jimmy. That's uh, that's the reason for it. So anyway, he gets back. He gets told by Helen's dad that the child's already been born. So he makes a beeline for Nurse Brown's home, where she, where the birthing happens, and he meets little Jimmy for the first time. And he's kind of taken aback by him because he describes him as having this squished face, kind of bloated ready purple and it looks like he's going through some inner turmoil <laughs> as he squirms around and he says to Helen oh, he's, a, he's a funny looking thing isn't he <laughs> to the point where he thinks there's something wrong with him so he says to the nurse can I see another one would you would you mind and she's like flabbergasted what do you, what do you mean he's a beautiful little boy please if you wouldn't mind she she relents anyway takes me into the next room where one of the other locals is is just given birth um, and this woman thinks oh it's lovely you've come in to see me James he's like oh yes no, no problem there's a wee baby there a wee girl and he looks down and he said god she looked worse than Jimmy <laughs> so <laughs> all my all my worries uh, subsided she had the squished face and the bloated kind of squirming of the inner turmoil uh, and she said one and he says oh thank you very much and she says, oh thanks for coming to see my baby oh not at all he, he's uh, she's she's beautiful uh, she's absolutely gorgeous <laughs> and leaves it <laughs> and leaves the room so he goes back anyway to see Helen Helen's just kind of laughing about it um, and the nurse comes in and she's fed up with him by this point and subsequently boots him out <laughs> saying something along the lines of that is a beautiful baby boy get out. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's very, very funny. Um, one of the other stories is actually from one of the previous books, but I just, I love it. It's about, it's an old, an old chap, a very old chap, and he's got an old uh, dog with him. His wife has passed away for a little while now, so, and James can kind of tell by his house that the lack of, the, of female influence, the place is kind of disheveled, there's, you know, he has very little possessions and his only companion left in the world is this little dog and James goes round and unfortunately the dog's really sick and in pain and James says you know the only thing to do in this case is to put him out of his misery and the old man said whatever you need to do do it um, you know I don't want him suffering uh, he says can I just have a wee word with him sure so he bends down pats the dog on the head whispers into his ear you know thanks old boy or something along those lines and with tears streaming down his cheeks and James, you know, puts the dog to sleep. And now, still wiping away the tears, the old man says, 
you don't know what and how much do you know I, I must pay and James says no no I was passing by honestly no charge he said, no no you can't do it for nothing look I, I, must, I must pay you so so what am I doing he said James says no I was passing through honestly it's no problem no charge so he makes his way for his car and on his way to his car he hears hey, hey lad just stop there for a minute and James stops turns around and he says here lad take this and he holds him out a cigar his last prized possession that this guy probably has and he says here lad have a cigar it's beautiful like what it's just like a lovely touching moment this guy has just lost his one and only companion in the world and he you know he gives his last probably prized possession he gives to James so it's real heartfelt I mean when I read it as well it's yeah it's 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 hard not to, to kill a well off of that one it's a uh, real tugs in your heartstrings that one thanks very much for watching I have had so much fun narrating these books and voicing all these wonderful characters. The books are available for you to listen to now.